This is it, the final day of our chapter one. So it's it's been a little bit of a journey here, guys. I mean, this is our fourth week of school, and uh, normally we get through chapters quicker than this, but with everything going on, I wanted to make sure we took our time. We got all you guys integrated with technology. Uh, I wanted to give you guys chances to ask questions, and, you know, do our thing. But uh, after doing day 10, I know you guys saw that that day was a little bit longer. I'll go ahead and give you a heads up. This day is going to be a little bit longer, too. But I'm going to try to be as effective and quick as I can be to minimize time so you guys can focus on studying and taking care of what you need to take care of. But let's take this seriously because we want to start off with our first chapter test on a very strong note. So please make sure you're studying and reviewing. And let's get down to business. Review part two. So I'm going to give you guys the next few seconds. You can pause the video and read over number one here. This is a really cool problem, especially somebody who's driven through all this in Florida. So we have mile markers right here. You can see at Quincy's 181, Madison's 251, Live Oak 283, so on and so forth. We also see that we are going to be driving an average speed of 60 miles per hour. I'll be honest. I'm not always the best at driving 60 miles per hour. I like to go about three to five miles faster than that, and that's not a good thing. I don't condone that. <laughs> I'm just giving you a warning as someone who has uh, pushed the speed a little bit. Not usually a good call. But let's, let's move on from life lessons into number one here. So what is the distance between Tallahassee and Lake City? Well, this is a simple matter of counting up the mile marker. So Tallahassee is at 199, and we're going to Lake City. So what is the distance? Well, then we're saying, okay, if Lake City is marker 303 and Tallahassee is marker 199, if we want to know the distance, just subtract them. 303 minus 199. And you end up with 104 miles. That's our difference here. Now, how about this? What would be the mile marker midpoints? Ooh. So between Tallahassee and Lake City, what will be the midpoints? Now, you can probably tell based off the way this graph looks. But it sure looks to me like it's going to be Madison. And here's how we can tell. If the distance is 104, uh, we know that that means if we cut that in half, then you would get uh, 52 miles for kind of the midpoint there. Now what that means is, again, remember, for midpoint, we know we can take the average of these mile markers. So we take 303 plus 199, divide that by 2. And so our midpoint, you add those together, 303 plus 199 is 502. Divide that by 2, and mile marker 251. And again, these are two different things right here, guys. So here is our distance. This is the distance. And then we know this is the midpoint here. So that question actually has two different questions there about distance and midpoint. Now here we're going to bring in time. How long will it take? How long? So now we're talking time to get from Tallahassee to Lake City. So this is gonna be, this is gonna require just a couple things here. First off, how far is Tallahassee from Lake City? Well, we just discussed that. That's 104 miles. So 104 miles. Now, how do we involve time? Well, that's where that 60 miles per hour comes into play. 
So we know if we're going 104 miles, you can divide that by 60 miles per hour. And when you do that, you get 1.73 hours. So <laughs> that's about, I think that's about how long it takes to get up to around Frankfurt if you want some comparison from Somerset. About 1.73 hours. Actually, maybe closer to Lowell. That'd be about right. Now, be careful on this one, guys. This one switches it up just a little bit. What is the total round-trip distance? Round-trip distance from Tallahassee to Lake City and then back to Live Oak. So be careful. Round-trip distance. So we know we're going from Tallahassee to Lake City, and then back to Live Oak. So we know that from Tallahassee to Lake City is 104 miles. And then from there, back to Live Oak, well, from Lake City to Live Oak, that is 303 minus 283. These are our mile markers. That's 20 miles. So we take that, 104 plus 20. You end up with 124 miles round trip. Now, another way to think about this is if they meant all the way around, if they went, meant from Tallahassee to Lake City, back to Tallahassee, and then to Live Oak. So kind of a boom, boom, boom. And if they're talking about that, then we're if we're talking actual round trip, then you're talking 104 plus 104 plus from Tallahassee to Live Oak, that is 100, I'm sorry, that is 84 miles. So this would be, that 84 is from Talla to Live Oak. So if you want to do it that way, that's another way to view it. Again, you won't have a question like this, exactly like this on your test, one that's kind of worded this way. So don't panic and be like, oh, which one does he mean? So that would be 292 miles if you were talking like that. So let's get, let's get away from the word problems, give ourselves a little bit of a break. And I'm going to give you guys a throwback problem. So let's see if you guys can figure out what is angle QRT on number four here. What are you thinking? So here, we see we've got a complementary set of angles here. QRS is 90 degrees. We know TRS is 33 degrees. So part plus part should equal that whole 90 degrees. So our missing angle, I'll call it A, plus 33. We know these two angles have to add up to be 90. And some of you guys can do the mental math. No sweat. That's going to be 50 seven degrees. So see, I know I said this day is going to be a little bit longer, but we're, we're moving. We already got this first page knocked out, guys. So don't give up on me. <laughs> don't give up on me. Now, number five is going to be a little bit tougher because now we're incorporating algebra. So again, see what you guys are thinking here? Number five. Let's try this one out. Again, little spoiler, dealing with complementary angles. Always look for that because we can't always assume this is going to be 90 degrees. This won't always be that way. But here, they give us that. So let's see what you guys got. I hope it didn't happen, but I bet some of you guys stopped short here. Not only do they want us to find the value of x, which using angle add post, uh, postulate, we can say that plus that is going to equal 90 degrees, we work that out. We get x is 23, but we're not done. We have to find the measure of each angle, too. 
So take this and we say, okay, let's talk angle R S B. We know it's going to equal it's 2x plus 20, 2 times 23 plus 20. You work that out, 2 times 23 is 46 plus 20, 66 degrees. And then put 20 in for angle B S T. We're talking 23 plus 1. So angle B, S, T, we're looking at 24 degrees. So those are our three pieces here, guys. We found out what X is, then plugged it in to find those two missing pieces. Read the question carefully. I cannot stress that enough. We had to find both those things. So easy in geometry to lose sight of what you're trying to find. So in my opinion, one of the toughest problems we're going to do today is number six. And again, let me zoom out a little bit so you guys get a better picture here. We've got to be just super, super careful on this one. This one involves probability, but it also involves seg add post as well. So be careful. Be very, very careful. Now, the good news is we know each of the pieces. So if we know each of the pieces from L to P, 2 plus 8 is 10, 10 plus 10 is 20, plus 4, we know this is going to be 24 units long. So that's helpful. So now if the probability of finding X is just a random point, Point X is on LN. So now LN, this stretch right here, from here to here, 2 plus 8, that is 10. So what are the chances that a point is dropped? We drop a point, boom. What's the chances that it lands here? Somewhere in here. Well, that's a 10 out of 24 chance. We're talking... The probability of the event happening out of the total possible spaces. So 10 out of 24, and we know that reduces down to 5 out of 12. How about this next one? The probability that X is on MO. So, okay, M to O. So M to O, that is 8 plus 10. So that is. 18 from there to there. What are our chances that if we drop a point, it lands somewhere in here? Well, that's 18 out of 24. That's even better odds. So 18 out of 24, which again, if you divide by 2, and actually we can go bigger than that. Let's divide by 6. 6 goes into 18. 6 goes into 24. It gives you 3 over 4. You have a three out of four chance of dropping a point on this line and it landing somewhere between M and O. That's great odds. So, this is going to be a problem we see very, very similar, crazy similar, super similar to a test question. Cannot stress enough. What kind of angles do we have here, guys? What kind of angles are these? Well, they're not adjacent. They're not beside each other. They're across from each other. They show the same vertex, though. They're opposite angles that show the same vertex. We're talking vertical angles. And these are my favorite kind of angles because if they're vertical, that means they are congruent. So 4x minus 20 and 2x plus 10, those are going to be congruent. But again, read the question. We don't just want x. We also want y and the measure of each angle. That's, that's actually five things.
we got to find five things here. X, Y, this angle, this angle, and that angle. So you want to talk about an involved problem. Let's start with X. Let's start with our, con our congruent vertical angles. So we've got 4X minus 20 equals 2X plus 10. Now we work this out. I'm going to add 20 over. Go ahead and take care of that. So here's one answer. X equals 15. But now we have to plug that back in to find QRU and TRS. So I'm going to give you guys a chance. Go ahead and find these two angles for me. So hopefully you realize once you plugged X back in and solved for this first angle, guess what? If this angle is 40 degrees and it's a vertical angle at this angle, that means this angle is going to be 40 degrees as well. So that once you found one, you had the other. Here's the part you may be a little bit confused on. How do we find this right here? How do we find 2Y? Or find out what Y is and then find out what that angle is? Well, I want you to look. 2Y has this line right here and this line right here going through it. We know there is 180 degrees from here to here. And we know there's 180 degrees from here to here. So guys, we have a pair of, or we have a pair of angles that are linear pairs. So here's what we're going to bust out. Linear pairs. We know that if this is 40 degrees, that's got to be 180. And if this is 40 of that 180, that means 2Y plus that 40 degrees is going to equal all of that. Part plus part equals the whole. So we work this out. Subtract 40, divide by 2. Y ends up equaling 70. And if Y is 70, we plug that back in. 2 times 70, we got 140 degrees. So 140 for this angle. So guys, that problem had a lot to it. That was, it may not have been the most difficult problem, but that was the most complex problem. So we found all five pieces. One, two, three, four, five. So nice work there. Let's get an easier one to break things up. Let's get away from algebra. I'm going to let you guys try number eight for me. So take some time. See if you can do A, B, and C. This is a really good throwback to collinear points and planes. So take some time. Let's see what you guys got on number eight. Let's see if you guys went three for three. Are points N and L collinear? N and L, not on the same, they are not on the same line. No. So we see that uh, N and L, N's over here, L's over here. No, thank you. Point B, I don't know why I said that's so weird. Point B, what fourth point would make up plane R and M? If there was one you missed, it was probably this one. Here's R, here's N, and here's N. Now, you see how we have two down here and one on this line segment? If we're going to make these work, R will go to M, N will go to J. And you've got... You've got this diagonal plane right here, kind of a downhill plane like that. So point J would be the point that makes that work. Last one is point N between points R and K. Here's point N. Here's R and here's K. Now, R and N are connected. N and K are connected. But no, R, N, and K are not all on the same line. R and N are on the same line. N and K are on the same line. But R and K are not on the same line. So let me, let me rephrase this. R and K are not on the same line, so therefore N can't be between them. All right, last page, guys. Just a couple problems left. I guess three, technically. But real quick, 
these are some of my favorite problems, error analysis. So what's going to happen is in each of these problems, these three problems, the people who worked it are going to have made a mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys time to look over these three, 9, 10, 11, and then we're going to kind of power through and see what the three mistakes were they made on these three. So let me give you time to look over them. Let's check out number nine. So what are the names of the rays that use point D as an end point? So they said AD, A to D, B to D, and C to D. Now here's the problem. They're going backwards. What they're creating are line segments. A to D is a line segment because D doesn't the point past D does not the line doesn't keep going. It stops at D. D's an endpoint. So they have these backwards. This should be DA, DB, and DC. So they got those backwards. So these errors are hidden pretty well. They're not obvious errors. How about this one? What's the intersection of plane ABD and plane CDH? So here's ABD. Let me highlight these. Here's plane A. B, D, intersecting with plane C, D, H. So here's where they intersect, right in here. Now the problem is they're saying that that's point C. But this point is not the point of intersection. In fact, we know planes don't intersect at points. They intersect where? At lines. So they intersect at lines. So point C is not where these two planes intersect. The line CD. Line CD is where these two intersect. Or you could say line segment CD, I guess in this case. Line segment CD is where these would intersect. Because I guess this line doesn't go on forever. It does have an in, two endpoints here. Last one. B is the midpoint. Ooh, that means AB, BC are congruent. What is AC? Well, let's see if they did the first part of the math right. They said that since, these are, since that's a midpoint, these two pieces are congruent. So this piece is going to be equal to this piece. Yep. They worked it out. And hey, x equals 5, that's right. So what's the problem? Well, wait, they asked us to find AC. Where is AC? They didn't finish the problem. And guys, this is one of the big mistakes people make in geometry is they forget what they're trying to find. we got to finish the problem. So now we know what 5 is. AC is the whole. So in order to find that, we know that once we find one piece, that's going to be the same as the other piece. So we take 5. We say, okay, 3 times 5 plus 2, 17. Okay, if that's 17, that means that's got to be 17. And so AC is going to be 17 plus 17 or 34. So guys, I'm not going to take any more of your time. If you want some additional practice problems, you've got them down here. I'm going to put up a video tonight doing these multiple choice problems. So if you want to see kind of what these look like, I will put up a video answering these. So if you want some practice, this is on the back page of day 11. So guys, if you have any questions, you know how to contact me. Thank you.